Hey, so it's Drive Home Brain Dump time. This morning I posted a video talking about uh, the Explore God discussion group that Beth and I have been attending. Last night's discussion on Does God Exist? And I mentioned that there was someone there who repeated what, what I'm going to forever probably call the Christian urban legend about the reliability of the Bible and how I almost I took everything I and I could muster to not jump all over it and point out that this was almost everything that she said was simply factually incorrect but we're going to actually be talking about the reliability of the Bible in a couple of weeks and so I'm going to save it for then but I thought I'd start a little kind of fun series talking about my take on the reliability of the Bible. Um, starting with a response to some of the claims that were made last night. The first is that we have originals for nearly every book in the Bible. I think I know how they came up with this, but it's amazingly wrong. It's understandable how they got from A to B, because they referenced the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, for those who don't know, the Dead Sea Scrolls um, are a bunch of scrolls and fragments that were found at, uh, I think it's pronounced Qumran, in 1947. And prior to this, the oldest Old Testament manuscripts that we had were 9th or 10th century. These probably date somewhere from 300 BCE to somewhere in the mid to late first century. They include fragments of every book in the Old Testament except for Esther. I don't know, but if I recall correctly, there are either no complete books from the Old Testament or there's a complete copy or two complete copies of I think Isaiah um, or maybe nearly complete but mostly what we're talking about are fragments to take the claim hey we found an ancient stash that has fragments of every book in the Old Testament except for Esther and morph that into we found originals of every book in the Bible except for Esther is just wrong at every conceivable level. First of all, the Dead Sea Scrolls contain nothing from the New Testament. The New Testament most likely uh, wasn't written at all when they stored away their library. There are few or no complete books. I'd have to check. I'm doing all this from memory. Um, Esther is missing. And if we're going to make an argument that this represents the true tradition, you know, that, that we should look at these as reliable because they're the oldest, um, then we would have to gut the existing canon and add a bunch of texts because there are fragments of books that are not in the canon for the Old Testament, the Tanakh. And I can't do the at the end of that that it probably deserves. But it's easy to see how this message of fragments of every book of the Old Testament except Esther morphs into originals of every book in the Bible. When it comes to New Testament, the oldest fragments we have are from the early 2nd century I think the oldest one is a, a very, very small bit of John that is smaller than a credit card, if memory serves. And the oldest complete manuscripts we have are from 2nd and 3rd century um, for the Gospels and some of the uh, some of Paul's letters. And then it gets later and later after that. Of all these manuscripts, there are a number of errors, modifications, things that don't match up. Some of them are simple scribal errors. Um, 
that are easily sorted. Some of them are not necessarily so easily sorted. There's been a rather strong and pretty good tradition of maintaining accuracy in copies, but it's far from perfect. And we are, when we say, when we try to determine how accurate they are, we are comparing um, texts from various ages against the oldest manuscripts we find. And one of the things about looking at the manuscripts, which is going to be a problem for the Dead Sea Scrolls, is that older isn't necessarily better. If you think of it in, the t in, in terms of mutations and potential mutations across generations, if you begin with the original and you make three, four, five copies of the original, and there's a couple errors in one, a couple errors in the other, none in this one, whatever, the fact that you found an old one and you're comparing it to a much newer one doesn't mean that the old one, because it is temporarily closer to the original, is actually scripturally, literally closer to the original. It's possible that it might have more errors um, or more serious errors. The same thing is true, you know, when we look at the Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, obviously we're going to find things that are very similar. Um, hopefully a lot of it is identical. Um, but without the originals, it's very difficult to say how close to the originals any of these texts are, because we don't necessarily know which copy lines, what, what their ancestry is, and where they are in relation to the original. Now, as we get closer in time to the original, obviously we can surmise that um, the first generation copies, even though they might have varied between them, uh, are less likely to have errors of certain types, but there's an entire study in several college courses, I'm sure, that are devoted to sorting out the details of that. Suffice it to say, we don't have originals. We don't have manuscripts. We do not even know the authorship of many of the books. The authorship of the Gospels, for example, the names Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are a matter of church tradition, attributing those names to them. Um, they were almost certainly not written by the individuals who, whose names are now attributed to those books um, for a lot of reasons that I'm not going to have time to go into in the video, but they basically borrowed from each other in areas where they wouldn't need to if they were the, the individuals who witnessed these things. It's unlikely that the Gospels were eyewitness accounts. These are most likely hearsay accounts. Maybe one or two steps removed from potential eyewitnesses. There's still the, the issue of the historicity of Jesus, which is just way outside the scope of this. But the, one of the other things that she said was that there are thousands of documents out there that exist and prove that everything in the Bible is true. And that claim is just so far removed from reality that I have a difficult time tracing a path back for it the way I do the statement about originals. I'm going to do a, another video talking about the things that haven't been verified, perhaps could not be verified, and perhaps could not be true um, as a response to this claim that everything in the Bible has been verified to be true. This is not what Bible scholars think. It is the result of some enthusiastic individuals taking bits and pieces of factual information, exaggerating to make the Bible look more reliable than it actually is. And so far, we've only talked about the textual reliability uh, of how true it is to the original, and not about the contextual 
reliability, how true the facts and the claims are, how accurate these things were to the time, you know, were these things written at the time to relay eyewitness accounts of real events. There's a lot of misinformation that comes from the pulpit, and there's also, and some of it is unintentional, some of it is well-meaning people who have been misinformed and relay that information to the best of their ability and it gets further and further wrong until you end up with some people who are convinced that we have originals of everything in the Bible and that everything in the Bible has been verified to be true and this serves as a foundation for their belief. And as I mentioned to the pastor last night, I really wish that ministers would do a better job of educating their congregants about these issues. And I felt the exact same way when I was a Christian. If you have somebody who's built their belief on these factual inaccuracies, you're going to lose them because it's simply undeniably false. There's not even any dispute amongst anybody who's bothered to research this at all. The only way you can get to these claims is through the process of spreading urban legends.